But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs>
So this idiot, he go around, he sell out himself to the Muslims, and in the same way, in his way to sell out his, himself to the Muslims so he can be invited for conferences overseas, so he will become popular as a puppy. He tried to demonize the Christians, make them people of hate, and in the same time, he make Islam as a victim of the Christians. You know, Christians are the one who hate, not the Muslims who follow the hateful Muhammad and the hateful Allah. So in order of being truthful and point his finger at the one who teach hate, this person, he point his finger at the Christians, in order to make Islam look beautiful and Muslims are victims. And you know, we have to agree, Muslims are victims. They just occupy Egypt from the Christians, all of it. They just occupy Iraq from the Christians, all of it. They just occupy Syria from the Christians, all of it. They just took the Byzantine kingdom from the Christian, that's it. They just took every Christian land, that's it. And they are the victims. And then they force the Christian to pay jizya like dogs. Chapter 9, verse 1 to 29. If you want to live. And they teach their children that there's no Christian, no Muslim should respect a Christian. Muhammad, he said, if you meet a Christian in the road, you have to torture him. You have to humiliate him. You have to spit at him. And we don't say things without proof. Everything we say here, not like those filthy coward demon who try to manipulate, try to fool the Christians. This is their books. This is their books. Not our books. This is their scholars, not our scholars. This is their prophet not our prophet. And this is what they teach in the same mosque, this guy he went to go to. Non-believers are filthy, najis. Only believers are pure. And najis mean filthy, nothing can wash you, wash you, like, uh, like uh, wash you from dirt. This is why if you go to Saudi Arabia, you will find a sign. You know, the Muslim, they speak about racism. Hmm? And they speak about what, how the white man, he made the special buses for the, white, the, the black and special buses for the white in South Africa. And they claim Islam is religion against racism, when the fact Islam, all of it is against, is, is, is against being not to be racist. If you go right now and search in Google, you will find signs all over Saudi Arabia in the highway. It says Muslim only, non-Muslim only. Muslim only. Because you are filthy, you are not allowed to go in certain highway. Who is the one teaching hate and discrimination and filth? The Jesus says, if you see somebody, he is not like you, spit in his face, torture him, don't make him walk in the way like every human being. This is chapter 9, verse number 29. It says that non-Muslims, which means the Christian and the Jews specifically, they have to feel themselves subdued. How is that? Well, because you don't worship Allah, we have to humiliate you as a result. So humiliating non-Muslims is a way actually to force them to convert to Islam because you give up, you go on the street, people spit at you. Your daughter, she go on the street, they will try to touch her ass or rape her. So you find that the only way to save yourself and your family is to convert to Islam. Otherwise you will live like a dog. If we ask the Mr. Holes in the narrative, Yasser Qadi, do you agree with this? He will say yes. Actually, we have tape of him 
We say that clearly and we will play it soon. So the Quran ordered the Muslim to kill the Christian, not to fight the Christians, to kill them. Unless they pay jizya or convert. And paying jizya is because Muhammad, he wanted to, to have an income for expanding. So look what it says here. Paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. If you ask a Muslim, if you ask any of those Abdul, they will say to you, oh, don't you pay tax? Don't you pay tax? Everybody pay tax. This is not tax. This is not tax. Imagine they take your land and they make you pay tax in your land for the one who stole your land. And then, if they don't choose to embrace Islam by, by the sword, then in defeat and support, like you, you see the, the, the uh, like explanation, and this is a naked theory. So feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated, etc. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhimma or elevate them above the Muslims. Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhimma. People of the Dhimma, those are the Christians who pay jizya. Because you pay jizya now, we have like a contract. We will not kill you. It's a mafia system. Actually, the word mafia, the word mafia, or the practice of mafia in, started in Sicily. After the Muslims withdrew, then the criminals, they took over. What happened that the Muslims, do you go to the stores and say, pay us, jizya. You want to live? Pay us. And then the mafia, when the Muslims kicked out, the criminals took over and they practiced the same thing. So you want protection? And the Muslims, they would say to you, will you pay us for protection? But the protection here is from us. This is a very filthy, demonic, satanic cult. So the Muslims is not allowed to honor the people of the Nimma or elevate them above Muslims. Okay, hold on. So why this guy is in the mosque, sitting in a chair, and Yasser Qadi introduced him as if he is a hero? Do you think Yasser Qadi is not following... You do not know what his prophet said? Or Yasser Qadi, he knew very well that he is not in Pakistan. Therefore, those people here, they have the upper hand. And we have to play taqiyya, which is something in the Quran, chapter 3, verse number 28. And through puppies like those, we can penetrate the Christians and we can destroy their community and their churches. Those people don't play. This puppy here is seeking his own fame. This man here is seeking destruction of the Christian churches. This guy is lying to this guy. And this guy is lying to this guy. Both are liars. Both are demonic. Both are satanic. For the one who don't want to say the truth, he is not a truthful. And not only that. This person, he announced clearly that he told his church that never, never insult other religion, never trash another religion, which means Islam. He's speaking specifically about Islam. We all like him. Yeah. And then came the Iranian revolution. And then came the 90s where the, the, the bombings of the, to of the uh, uh, towers first took place, and then came 9-11. And so in our news, keep in mind, you have three minute bites of news. The only thing we hear about a Muslim is they're, they're terrorists, they're extremists, and they want to kill us. Mm, and the news now is lying. So the Muslims, they don't practice terrorism. And they don't believe in Muhammad teaching when he said, I've been ordered to kill all non-Muslims. So this is what we hear about Muslims. 
But the question is, why in the news there's only Muslims doing terrorism if Islam is not a religion of terrorism? What about Hindus? Why we don't see somebody is a Hindu doing that? What about Buddhist? What about Christians? What about atheists? This person, he claimed to be a Christian minister. Don't you know that the Bible says, from their fruit you shall know them? So he is now playing that those people, they misunderstood you. Because this is what they say in the news. In fact, in the news, by the way, they always defend Islam. George Bush, right away, he says Islam is peace. Obama started teaching about Ramadan. Joe Biden is quoting Muhammad, the filthy Muhammad, the scumbag. This is the truth. All liberals, TV stations, they praise Islam and defend Islam. Islam is not ISIS. Islam is not ISIS. Well, name for me one thing. ISIS did, Muhammad did not do. Just name one thing. So he is kissing asses, saying to them, sorry, we are sorry. We got you wrong. You don't follow a terrorist prophet. I found a video of the filthy Yasser Qadi. Behind the door, behind the door, Yasser Qadi, in a private meeting where he thought nobody is recording, he said the following. See no sound coming for some reason. Let us see what's the problem. What is the problem? Okay, maybe I muted the uh, microphone here. Give me a second. The precise definition. There we go. So this is Yasser Qadi. He tells us exactly how Islam think about the Christians. When Yasser Qadi he said with the Christians, he say, "Why you are treating us like this?" As we heard this guy, you know, saying. He was, Yasser Qadi was telling him, like, you know, Christians, they have a misconception about us, etc. Misconception. This is a recording of Yasser Qadi in a private meeting, not to be published. Somebody recorded him. This is the precise definition of shirk. To make a partner along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we realize then that obviously shirk, which is the opposite of tawheed, must by necessity and by definition be the most evil of all evils as Jews and Christians are mushrikun in our perspective of Tawheed as we have studied we can understand how and uh, only the Muslims are upon Tawheed and it is also the same reason or the same principle of Tawheed which is the first obligation upon every single human being that he bears witness and he testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is because of the same principle of Tawheed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been commanded to do Jihad. Jihad is a means and not a goal in and of itself. It is a means to establish Tawheed on the land. أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أُقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حَتَّى يَشْهَدُوا أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ I have been commanded to fight the people until they testify لا إله إلا الله. So the whole reason why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has created us and sent the Prophets and revealed the books and differentiated us based upon this principle and allowed for jihad is the basis and is the principle of Tawheed. The life and property of a mushrik 
holds no value in the state of jihad. Make notice I said in the state of jihad, not at all times and places. The life and property of a mushrik becomes halal while in a state of jihad. The Prophet ﷺ said, and we quoted the hadith before, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah. And when they say, La ilaha illallah, he went on, when they say, La ilaha illallah, their life and property become protected from me. Which means if they don't say, La ilaha illallah, their life and property are halal for the Muslims. So, Did you hear it? Did you hear it? This is the same person who those coward so-called false Christians, they invite them to speak in your churches. He's saying your wife is halal to rape her. Your daughter is halal to rape her. Your property is our property now. We've been commanded to kill you unless you worship Allah. Did you hear it? I've been commanded, Muhammad said, to kill all the people. You see, when he say fight, it's coming from the word qatilu. Qatilu coming from qatala. Qatala means kill. So I've been ordered to kill all mankind until they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his filthy prophet. And then and only then, their property and their life is protected. So this guy is encouraging the Muslims to kill Christians and kill Jews in the heart of America. But this is not in public. And you will notice that somebody was recording and he is sitting in the same table with Yasser Qadi. How we know? You will hear him hitting the table with his hand. And when he hit the table with his hand, you hear that on the recorder. The recorder is shaking. If we go back to this mental false Christians, and if you live in Texas, please spread those videos. You see those people, they became popular, even they are putting them in TV. Even TBN putting them in this guy in TV. Do TBN knows what they are doing? The TBN station become a scam, a scam station too? This is a video made by uh, 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 Sam Shamoon about it. You can go and watch it. And he give you like extra details from the Bible refuting this filthy fake Christian. So we will play uh, uh, this, the second part of the video because we did not play it all. But we go here back and look what this guy is saying. The second thing is how many of you Muslims would like the whole world to follow the path of Islam? Can I see your hands? Did you know if we were to go in a church and I were to ask that same question and say, how many of you Christians would love for you to follow Jesus? They would all raise. Look how stupid he is. He says, how many of you like the whole world follow the path of Islam? But when he asked the Christian, he said to the Christians, how many Christians of you, how many of you, of you he's talking to the Christians, how many of you like to follow Jesus? How many, how, do you see how stupid he is? They are Christian already, supposedly. Continue. And look what he's saying now. Raise their hands just alike. What does that mean? It means that we have a different ideology, and so as a result, we disagree, and we compete with one another. We compete. Are you saying we should humiliate a Muslim if we see him in the street as Muhammad he just taught, as Yasser Qadi he just said? Should we do jihad and kill Muslims? Well, this is the compete. Should we take a sword and attack Muslims? Do this guy even knows what he's talking about? Compete, you see, compete. If, if, if there's two people, two group, are competing for the same Target, like let us say love. Jesus let's say love your enemy. Compete in what? Compete in evil? We have, this is the guy next to you. He is saying that the Muslims have a duty to kill every Christian, every Jew. He's just sitting next to you. 
the prophet command us to uh, be commanded to kill all mankind until they convert to Islam. Let us compete. of Tawheed must by necessity and by definition be the most evil of all evils. This the, is the precise definition of shirk. To make a partner along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we realize then that obviously shirk, which is the opposite of Tawheed, must by necessity and by definition be the most evil of all evils. As Jews and Christians are mushrikun in our perspective of Tawheed. So we are the most evil of evil. The Christians and the Jews, they are the most evil of evil. Let us compete. As we have studied, we can understand how. And uh, only the Muslims are upon Tawheed. Only the Muslims in the world, they are good. Anyone else is a piece of garbage. And it is also the same reason or the same principle of Tawheed, which is the first obligation upon every single human being. That he bears witness and he testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is because of the same principle of Tawheed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been commanded to do jihad. Jihad is a means and not a goal in and of itself. It see, is, the, see uh, Yasser Qadi in a public meeting, he says the Muslims, they've been forced to defend themselves. That's what he's saying. Here is a private meeting. He says, this is what jihad is exists. Jihad is not to defend ourselves. Jihad is to spread Islam. It is the mean, not the goal. The goal is to convert you to Islam. Jihad is the mean. Did you hear it? This is why the Prophet, he ordered us to do jihad. Not to defend ourselves. But to worship Muhammad as God. Because Muslims, they say that Muhammad is just a prophet, but the fact we know that Muhammad is the God of Islam. Who they are to speak? You see, in the Middle East, you can say the F word to Allah and nobody will take you to jail. If you insult Muhammad, you are dead. So who's God in this religion? So jihad, the purpose of jihad is not for the Muslim to defend themselves as they lie to us when they speak in public. In a private meaning, they tell the truth. Jihad is to spread Islam and to conquer and to take the Christians, women, and Jewish, and Hindus, and Buddhas, and atheists, their women as a slave for sex, and their men, they will be killed, and their children, they will be our servant, and their land will be our land, and their jewelries will be in the necklace of our wives. And it is because of the same principle of Tawheed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been commanded to do Jihad. Jihad is a means and not a goal in and of itself. It is a means to establish Tawheed on the land. I have been commanded to fight the people until they testify La ilaha illallah. So the whole reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and sent the prophets and revealed the books and differentiated us based upon this principle and allowed for jihad is the basis and is the principle of Tawheed. The life and property of a mushrik holds no value in the state of jihad. Make notice I said in the state of jihad, not at all times and places. The life and property of a mushrik. Uh, we have a Muslim here. He says the word fight does not mean kill, but fight. You know, uh, sometime when I say Muslims have suffered from the second you follow Muhammad, you have a you have a low IQ problem. I don't know. It's a magical. But just to show you how stupid this religion is. So the word fight does not mean kill, Christian Prince. Faraz Rabbani, Faraz Rabbani is a fraud. He don't even speak Hebrew. Let him talk. Let him call me and we will laugh. Faraz Rabbani. The prophet, he sent the letter to the king of the Roman, convert or else. The Muslims, they invade Persia. They invade, they wanted to invade Rome. They invade Egypt. And the Muslims, they say, does not mean kill. I mean, they went all the way to China and doesn't mean kill. <laughs> this hadith has no basis. You son of Muta'ad, don't come here. We are reading Quran, you donkey. Chapter 9, verse number 29. This is your Quran. It's your Quran says, kill the non-Muslims. 
It's your Quran. So only religion of Allah will be exist. Fight the unbelievers. So the deen, the religion, will be only Islam. Read with me and laugh at those cowards when they try to fool the Christians. I mean, this guy, he just said, this hadith has no base in the comment. So if it doesn't have no base, why you Muslims quote it? And why you Muslims record it? And why you Muslims repeat it? And why you Muslims you teach it? It have no base here to play taqiyya, to fool the Christian, to say this is not true. The Prophet did not say that. But this is Quran, you donkey. Remember, you are talking to Christian Prince. This is your stupid book. Hmm? The pagan Muhammad, the black stone kisser, he order to kill all mankind. So only Muslims will stay alive. If they convert to Islam, then stop killing them. Chapter two. I don't know what's wrong with this website. It's not working. For some reason, we click, it doesn't work. Chapter two, verse number 193. Let us try to open it in different website. If this is, I will, I will try one more time. Here we go. Fight the, the, the guys, by the way, look at the Muslim tra translation here. Fight them until there is, until persecution is no more. There's nowhere he says persecution. That's a false translation. And look how they expose themselves with the false translation. It says, and religion is for Allah. So how persecution and how religion is for Allah? Until there is no religion except Islam. So who is the one persecuted? who? You change the translator. This is the faith in Islam, as it is. And we are, you know, we are showing you What's wrong with this? Let us see, different translation. This website is messed up. I don't know what's happening here. Let us see Yusuf Ali. Fight them until there's no more torment or op oppression. Oppression. If we look in Arabic here, it says, Hatta la takuna fitna. Fitna have nothing to do with oppression. Persecution, as they claim. Fitna is a trouble. Fitna is a word mean trouble. You can take the word, take a dictionary, and you will see. Trouble mean? Trouble in the society. Something not good. So fight them until not, nothing not, go, not good is there, which means what, what is not good is not to be Muslim. And the, the, the continue of it, it says clearly. And there are prevailed justice and faith in Allah. This is false translation. So all religion will become to Allah. Let's go to the front translator. We will show you one by one. The translators and so we can expose them here we go fight them until there's no more fitna between two bracket religious persecution that's false and the religion belong to god alone how have you how you are under persecution and you are the one who is forcing others to belong to allah alone it's mean it's you are the one it, you, you are the one who is doing that the one who fight and kill is not the weak one 
the one who do the aggression obviously is not the weak one because you are the one saying fight them kill them until there's no other religion besides islam is change the translator shakir you see how they lie all of them they are saying almost the same but we will find one of them he made a mistake and he said the truth Fight them until there is no dissension and the religion is for Allah. <laughs> Karari, Karari, whatever his name. Yeah, all of them, they are trying to say the same, but the word fitna have nothing to do with this. Let us see Muhammad Asad, the favorite translation of uh, Zuzu Naik. Oppression, the Muslim, you see the Arab, they used, according to Muslim, they used to have uh, uh, 365 idols around the Kaaba. So how those Arab who tolerate that the guy next to him have different God and he did not kill him, how they are the one who do oppression? In fact, it was Muhammad who do oppression. Either my God or no God. Either me as a prophet and there's no prophet except me or I would kill you all. You keep it changing. But if we see, actually, if we go and actually, even if we try to read uh, the interpretation of the Muslims, you will find how we expose them. But to make it easier, there's a translation Muslim they did not play around it too much. In chapter 9, verse number 29. Chapter 9, verse 29 says clearly why the Muslims have to kill non-Muslims. Simply because they don't follow Islam. And fight against those. Hmm? And look at this, they are adding things. Let us go and see different translation, Yusuf Ali. This guy is adding too much words. Not there. Fight those who believe not in Allah. So why we fight? Because you don't believe in Allah. Nor the last day. They don't believe in the last day of Allah, that Allah is there going to be judged between us. Nor they hold what is forbidden which has been forbidden, which what Muhammad order, not by, but see, by Allah and his messenger, do you see it? By Allah and his messenger. Messenger is God too. Because if Allah is the one who forbid things, why you are saying in his messenger? So there's two source of forbidden in Islam. It is Allah and Muhammad. Muhammad is a partner with Allah. They are pagan, they are not monotheist. They are mushrikeen nor acknowledge the religion of truth, which means Islam. Here it says, even they are, this is false, doesn't say even if they are, of the people of the book, until they pay the jizya and feel themselves humiliated, spit at, Muslims throw their shit on them, and the hadith and this verse in the Quran explained here by Muhammad himself. Feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of Dhimma, which means the one who pages here, or elevate them above the Muslims. And not only that, Muhammad, he says, if you meet a Christian or a Jew in the street, do not initiate salam. Don't say salam. Do you remember two days ago, a Muslim, he called me, he said, some and, uh, and, and some and the curse of Allah on you, which means poison, poison, and the curse of Allah. He spoke fast, so he thought I would not understand his Arabic, but I am the master of Allah and Muhammad in his language. That's why a Muslim, he's not allowed to say, Assalamu Alaikum. He cannot say, I have tons of videos, they are already in YouTube, a Muslim, he called Salaamu Alaikum Muslims. I say to him, why you don't say Salaamu Alaikum to Christian? He says, we are not allowed. You cannot say peace. See? So when the Muslim, they say we fight those who fight us, they mean everybody, anyone who accept Islam is waging war against Islam. So we have to kill him. So don't initiate Salaam to the Jews, which means Shalom, and the Christians. And if you meet any of them in the road, force them to the narrowest alley. In the old days, they used to be like in the sideway, actually until now we have it in the street. 
like in the sideway, there is a little uh, uh, tiny slip in the road where the water go, and then there is an opening for you know the water to go to the sewage. It's exactly the same. But at that time, there's no sewage. So the water will stay in that place, go into the lowest point of the city or the town. So when a Muslim, he see a Christian walking in the road, he have to humiliate him, spit in his face, and he have to force him to walk in the sewage. Literally. And this is the idea and the order of the Prophet. لا تبدأوا اليهود والنصارى بالسلام وإذا لقيتم أحدهم في في طريق فاضطروه إلى أضيقه Let us go and show you the reference from the Sahih authentic books Do you see it? This is what they teach in their mosque So how come they didn't do it? Well if they can they will If they can, they will. This is what they did to the Christians in the Middle East for centuries and centuries and centuries. Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, Huraira, it's, you know, like coming from the word Hurra. This guy, he used to have a lot of cats. He molested cats. Narrated that the Messenger of Allah, B-B-U-H, they cannot even say his name without adding titles and, you know, don't start saluting the Jews and the Christians when you meet them. And if you meet any of them in the road, force him to go in the narrowest alley part of the road. Between two brackets, the Muslim trying to explain to you, don't give them positions of authority among you. Put them down. Put them down. So this coward, he is going to the mosque, kissing the ass of Muslims who they believe that they are higher, they are the best of mankind, and their duty is to come to your country, whatever, whatever country it is, if you think you are safe from them, from this religion, you are, you are mistaken. And let me prove it to you. Their duty is to put a chain around your neck and bring you like a dog. Muhammad, he said, and this is a verse from the Quran too, you are the best of people ever raised up to the benefit of mankind. Most of them, they say to you, benefit. Do you see the word benefit? So if you are in a, in a stupid ignorant who do not know what they are talking about, you have no knowledge, you say to yourself, it says benefit. What's wrong with that? Benefit means they will make cars, they will make airplanes for us, they will create the electricity. I mean, who is the one who creates electricity? Muslims. Who is the one who made cars? Muslims. Muslims, the one did everything. And by the way, all the scientists the Muslims are proud about, they were atheists. All of them. And most of them being killed for being atheists. Most of them being killed. Like when they say to you, this scientist, he was a Muslim, none of them was a Muslim. You are the best of people ever, raised up for benefit of mankind. Chapter 3, verse 110. The best for mankind are those who bring them with the chain round their necks till they embrace Islam. And supposedly by bringing you like a dog and put a chain around your neck, literally, they are saving you from going to hell. You see, this is the benefit. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari, which is very authentic hadith. Very authentic hadith. Then we will see this guy here in the video. He will say the following. What he teach in his church. This potato, what he teach in his church. Where is the video? Let me see. Look what he say to his church people. How many of you Muslims would like the whole world 
to follow the path of Islam? Can I see your hands? Did you know if we were going to church and I were to ask that same question and say, how many of you Christians would love for you to follow Jesus? They would all raise their hands just alike. What does that mean? It means that we have a different ideology and so as a result, we disagree and we compete with one another. You see, we mentioned that this is a statement you say if you agree that their religion is doing good. Compete. You see the word compete? Here you see that this person is satanic. Why? Because he is saying we should compete with Muslims in doing good. This is the purpose, right? This is what, they, this is what you understand from the statement, doing good. But we just showed you that Islam is not about doing good to Christians or to the Jews or to the Hindus. Islam is about being good to the Muslims only. The Quran says you will never find one Muslim he is loving. To non-Muslim, even if they are his own parents and his own children and his own sisters and brothers. Chapter 58, verse number 22. Chapter 58, verse number 22. لا يؤمنون بالله يؤمنون من حد الله. You will not find. You will not find one person, one Muslim, who believe in Allah and the judgment day. He will be loving to non-Muslims. Even if they are their family. See here it says making a friendship. That's a lie. Chapter 5, verse number uh, uh, 51 already says, Make not take no Christian, no Jews as a friend. This is different. Change the translation. Let us see different liar. The see big child. Here we go. You will not find folk who believe in Allah and the last day loving those who oppose Allah and his messenger, even if though they are their father, which means their blood. Now we are not talking about the neighbors of different country or uh, you are immigrant, you go to America or to Australia or to, you know, no, we are talking about your family. Even their family, they are not allowed to love them. You will not find. So the question here, how much love those, the one in the mosque, and you will notice that the one in the mosque, all of them, they are men. The one in the mosque, all of them, they are men. So when this uh, so self-acclaimed pastor, he invite the Muslims, they will come, the men, and they will sit with the Christian women in the church? If you ask yourself, why everybody is a man? Where is the woman? This religion have no women? Muslims will not allow their women to listen to anyone else. But this coward here, he will invite people who believe in terrorism, obviously. We just heard Yasser Qadi saying we should kill the Christians. He will invite them to the church, so we'll sit your, with your sister, with your daughter, with your wife, and they try to play in their head. And maybe do jihad laugh. You know, try to date you and then sleep with you and then take you and marry you and make have babies from you to, to expand Islam. This guy, he says, I don't think that's bad. Hmm. I think what's bad is when we vilify one another. I have something. I so are you saying that Muhammad is filthy because this is all what the Quran is about? So as long you are saying it's bad, why you don't say to the Muslims? It's bad to attack the Christians. It's bad to, to, to spit at them. It's bad to say the Christians are kuffar. It's bad to say they are the worst of the preachers. It's bad, it's, it's bad to say they are the evil of evil. We just heard the scumbag, yes, Arkadi, saying that the Christians are the evil of evil. This is the precise definition of shirk. This is the precise definition of shirk. To make a partner along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we realize then that obviously shirk, which is the opposite of tawheed, 
must by necessity and by definition be the most evil of all evils, as Jews and Christians are mushrikun in our perspective of Tawheed. See, we are the most evil of evil. So why you don't say to them, to the guy next to you, shame on you to say we are the most evil of evil. So look what we have now. We have a guy who invite the Muslim to his church. He tell the Christians, don't attack Islam. Don't say Islam is bad. And we have the guy next to him says, Christians are the evil of evil. How that will work? Who is the stupid here? And not only that, he says he give order to his church not to bash Islam, not to trash Islam. I teach young pastors, never, never, never trash another religion. So this guy saying that Jesus was a fraud because this is what Jesus did. This is what Elohim did. This is what Abraham did. This is what Isaac did. This is what all the, the apostle and all the prophet did. Never, 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 never. So what exactly is your duty then? How you speak to Muslim? You say to them, Muhammad is a prophet. He is a good man. Don't worry, be happy. Can you believe how far the devil is involved now in our churches? He is proud. He is kissing the asses of Muslims saying, look, I tell my church, never, never, never. Look how many times he repeat the word never. Well, you're never being Christian. You are just doing business that we have a different ideology and so as a result we disagree and we compete with one another i don't think that's bad i think what's bad is when we vilify one another i have something i teach young pastors never 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 trash another religion so jesus when he said to them you are evil hypocrite false he was a bad person we should not follow jesus Jesus was very bad then. How many times Jesus, he bashed false religion? Peter, Paul, all the disciples, all the prophets, God himself. So what is the purpose of your church then? Is it the church is based in teaching good and rebuke? The bad? Based in his false propaganda agenda, we should not speak against false prophet. So now we should go and delete all the verses against false prophet, false teachers false religion, false gods. This is what he is telling you. And if we do that, what is left in the Bible? The Savior, he came because people are lost. And how they are lost? They are following the wrong teachers and masters, following false prophets. Actually, the Bible says, any prophet who speak in the name of other prophet, other God, not me, he should be put to death. And thus, this is why our God, our Lord, he put Muhammad to death and he made him die like a rat by poison. Muhammad, he claimed that if he's lying, God, the true God, will cut his artery. And then we find that this is exactly how Muhammad, he died. 
And I believe that's our Lord. He wanted to prove to us that Muhammad is a fraud. Exactly as he promised that if he is lying, his artery will be cut off. Muhammad, he made this lie saying, well, if I am lying, my God told me, if I am lying, he will cut my artery. But Muhammad never thought that will happen. And what is make it more funny, even if it happened, how we will know? I mean, you know what I mean? You can, like, we are talking about a person who died 1400 years ago. How I will know that this is how he died? No way. It's something internal. It's not like by sword or etc. But when Muhammad himself, he announced how he is dying. He himself, the Lord of the truth, he forced the filthy, satanic man Muhammad to admit how he is dying. In chapter 69, verse number 44, 45, 46, etc., says it clearly that if Muhammad is making false concerning us, us here mean God. The Muslim, they claim that Allah is one, but yet always he use us, we, etc. And if you ask them why he use us and we, they say because it's majestic. So Allah himself is not confident, is not happy with the word I. So he feel it's better for him to be us. So he feel better, it's better off for Allah to be us, not to be I. This is how stupid this ideology is. So if he is inventing false teaching, false statement, claiming that it's coming from us, we surely, we are going to grab him, and surely we are going to cut his artery. And then we found the dummy Muhammad. He confirmed that he is dying exactly as he promised if he is lying. So I told my young youth pastors not to trash any other religion. So the book of Isaac, Ezekiel, is uh, we should delete it. What is the book of Ezekiel? <laughs> Ezekiel is bad. Jeremiah is bad. Luke, Paul, Peter, Jesus. Can you believe it that this person claimed to be a Christian minister? What, what do you think if Jesus come in the judgment they will say to this man and to the fool who go to his church? In the book of Acts, there is a statement which I find it fitted perfectly with this man. Keep watch over yourself and all your flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you uh, over us, by, uh, be shepherd of the church of God, which he thought, which he brought with his own blood. I know that altar I leave savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock, even from your own number, men will rise and distort the truth in order to draw away, uh, to, to, to displace after them. It's exactly describing this man. He's trying to please the devil so he can be popular in TV. And what is making me worry, how in the world TBN, if somebody knows TBN TV, because always I thought about this TBN to be somehow good station. 
how in the world they do interview with this coward, with this fraud? What we will say to Jesus if this is our churches today? What we will say to Matthew when he was quoting what the Messiah was saying? Watch over, false prophet. They come to you in a sheep clothing. But they are vicious wolves. They want to eat your life. By their fruit, you will recognize them. So Jesus, he ordered us to recognize the fruit, to judge the fruit. We are not judging people. Judging people is to God. The fruit is how you know. Good fruit, give a clear evidence of who you are. Talk is cheap. You can speak whatever you want. By their fruit, you will recognize them. So this guy is saying, don't judge the fruits. Don't judge Islam. Don't speak against Islam. Never, never, never trash a cult. Never trash a cult. I'm warning you. Never trash a cult. But you know, if you are a Christian, that this is absolutely not biblical, and this is satanic teaching. Because if you don't tell the Muslims that Islam is a cult, how the Muslim they will know it's cult? What is that? I tell my young youth, uh, who is going to go to your church, you come back? Who is the fool who go to a church like this? I want another. I have something I teach young pastors. Never, never, never trash another religion. If the only- Hey, yes, sir, Kati, did you hear the guy? He just said, never, 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 never trash another religion. Yes, Kadi, he said to himself, look at this donkey. We got a fish. We will barbecue him, and now we will invade the church, and we will fool those fools. Never, never, he keep his telling his followers, so they will never bash Islam, they will never attack Islam, they will never speak against Islam. Let us go and attack Christianity. This is the precise definition of shirk, to make a partner along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we realize then that obviously shirk, which is the opposite of tawheed, must by necessity and by definition be the most evil of all evils as Jews and Christians are mushrikun in our perspective of Tawheed as we have studied we can understand how and uh, only the Muslims are upon Tawheed and it is also the same reason or the same principle of Tawheed which is the first obligation upon every single human being that he bears witness and he testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is because of the same principle of Tawheed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been commanded to do Jihad. Jihad is a means and not a goal in and of itself. It is a means to establish Tawheed on the land. أُمِرْتُ أَنْ وَقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حَتَّى يَشْهَدُوا أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ I have been commanded to fight the people until they testify La ilaha illa Allah. So the whole reason why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has created us and sent the Prophets and revealed the books and differentiated us based upon this principle and allowed for jihad is the basis and is the principle of Tawheed. The life and property of a mushrik holds no value has created a, a in the prophet. state of jihad. Make, notice I said in the state of jihad, not at all times and places. The life and property of a mushrik becomes halal while in a state of jihad. The Prophet Sallallahu said, and we quoted the hadith before, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah. And when they say, La ilaha illallah, he went on, 
when they say La ilaha illallah, their life and property become protected from me. Which means if they don't say La ilaha illallah, their life and property are halal for the Muslims. So the Christians do commit shirk. They are, they are kuffar and they are mushrikun. The mushrikun are najas. They are filthy. Najas. Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? People, did you hear? The Christians are filthy. You see, when I say to you that the word najis, the Muslim, they translate as impure. It's a lie. The word is mean filthy. Did you hear it? So we have a false Christian. I hope not, nobody will go to his church anymore. He said to his followers, never, 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 never trash other religion, trash other religion. And the guy sitting next to him, just few inches away, saying that the Christians are Jew and Jews are filthy. They are, they are kuffar and they are mushrikun. The mushrikun are najas. They are filthy. Najasa. Did you, did you hear the, do you hear the hatred? He did not say just filthy. Listen, listen carefully. How the filthy, how the filthy word is coming. He's not just saying the word filthy. There is something coming from hatred, heart, evil heart. He did not just say filthy, like filthy. Filthy. He is speaking from his evil heart. They are, they are kuffar and they are mushrikun. So the Christians do commit shirk. They are, they are kuffar and they are mushrikun. The mushrikun are najas. They are filthy. Najasa. They are filthy. A spiritual filthiness which can only be purified by the purity of tawheed. Allah calls the mushrikun najis, which is a very evil thing. When Allah Himself says the mushrikun are najis, Allah is calling them najis. They are a najasa, a filthy, impure, dirty substance. You are urine. Did you hear it? The Christians and the Jews are urine. This is the guy who this has come back. He called himself Bob, Bobby. He want to invite to his church. And by the way, this guy is just saying the truth now. This is a private meeting. He was not recording. Somebody got him busted. I tell my pastor, never, 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 never. You, you, you sound like a dog. You sound like a puppy who is a stupid. And the other Qadi is saying to himself, ah, look at this donkey. We got a ride home. We are going to ride him until we go to his church and then we will fool those poor Christians who think we are here to save them and we love them. But in fact, we believe that they are urine, they are filthy, and we are here to conquer. We disagree and we compete with one another. I don't think that's bad. I think what's bad is when we vilify one another. I have something I teach young pastors. Never, never, never trash another religion. And I say, never, never, never go to such a scumbag church. Please, if you are a person who live in Texas, Dallas, this is where his church is, spread this video for everybody. Let everybody know that this guy is a fraud. He is just kissing the ass of the devil. He is inviting people who believe that you are urine. And you know what? As you see, we are not making things up. Everything we just showed you is in the front of you. If you want to don't download this video, by the way, this is the video. It's called U.S. Imam Preaching Theft, Rape and Murder in USA. Let me post the link. All of you, please download the video. And I'm very thankful for the Muslim who recorded this, this video. Because obviously, nobody can attend this such a meeting except Muslims. It's a privately made. This is why there's no video. It's meant to be very private. And here, the filthy Yasser Qadi is saying what he believes. Truly. You are urine. You are, you are feces, like feces of dogs. 
So the Christians do commit shirk. They are, they are kuffar and they are mushrikun. The mushrikun are najas, they are filthy. Najasa. They are filthy, a spiritual filthiness which can only be purified by the purity of tawheed. Allah calls the mushrikun najas, which is a very evil thing. When Allah Himself says the mushrikun are najas, Allah is calling them najas. They are a najasa, a filthy, impure, dirty substance. Dirty substance, did you see it? How many of you will promise to download this video and you can cut it pieces? You can cut it pieces if it's long. Make part one by one and spread it all over. How many of you really care to expose false Christians? Because false Christians, by the way, are more dangerous than Muhammad. Because you send your child thinking that you are sending him to a church. In fact, you are sending your child to the devil. This guy, he will bring Muslims to teach about Islam in the church and fool your children, speaking that Muhammad was a good man. He taught us to love everybody. In private meeting, Christians, their women, their children, their money is halal, which means it's lawful for us to take, to rape, to kill. Those are more dangerous than Muhammad and the devil himself. This is why Jesus, he said, be aware of false teachers. They will come to you in a clothes of a sheep. This guy is a sheep wolf. He is a sheep wolf. He is coming to you in a clothes of a sheep, but in fact, he is a wolf trying to fool the Christians, forbidding them from exposing Islam, so your children will be only exposed to Islam. He said to his society, everybody in the mosque is men, and then he will invite all those men to go to a church full of women too, and young women, so they can play another game too. There's a channel I told you about, full of those. They collect them. They are there for a reason. This channel, let me see, see the, uh, this is his page. I found his page too. He have a page for himself, this guy. Look how big the page is. And look in his page, there's nothing but Muslims. Look at this. In his page, there's nothing but Muslims. <laughs> and the funny, they call it interfaith. And look, the Muslims are sitting, enjoying, laughing at the fool next to them, says, you know what? We are sitting with the feces, with the urine, the filthy and the worst of the creatures, the animals, so-called the Christians, and let us laugh at them. And they invite him to go to overseas, you know, free hotel, free. This is what he liked. I mean, he, he liked the fame. So now he became very popular between them so they can use him. Those people are priceless for Islamic, you know, propaganda and agenda. Look at this. Fraud of the fraud. I want to find the channel which I want to show you. Uh, anyway, it's called Emir Stein. Emir Stein. Let me zoom in the corner here. Emir Stein channel. Everyone there is a false Christian. And this is why he is there. And you ask yourself, who is the one paying for this? Follow the money. You see here, it says Emiristein. Let me show you. I'm trying to zoom in.
there is a Catholic, there is a Protestant, there's from everywhere. They bring them, but all of them, they share one thing. They praise Islam. They are useful for Islam. And as you see, this person is bashing Christianity. He says, why invigilate uh, uh, Christians, why they hate Islam? When we know that in every church around the world, we pray for the whole world. We never, we never pray for the death of Muslims. We never pray to kill Muslims. We never pray to hurt Muslims. We pray for love and peace, and we love them. And when we say we love them, it doesn't mean we give them a hug. It means we show them the truth that Muhammad is a fraud. And he's a scam the same as this person we are speaking about. So, if you are a person from Texas, spread the video, let every person who goes to that church, if you know their Facebook, show it to them. This man is no Christian. Don't go to his church. He's a false man. And I know that me saying that, that will promote him more between the Muslims, but who care? The Muslims, they knew that we are saying the truth. And actually, uh, we, we, what, what more we can do? We show you the reference, and we showed you Yasser Qadi himself saying that you are feces. The same person in the video is the same person saying Christians are filthy. The Prophet ordered to kill them. Jihad is the mean. Islam is the goal. Their property, their money is lawful for us. This is the precise definition of shirk, to make a partner along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we realize then that obviously shirk, which is the opposite of tawheed, must by necessity and by definition be the most evil of all evils. As Jews and Christians are mushrikun in our perspective of tawheed, as we have studied we can understand how, and uh, only the Muslims are upon tawheed. And it is also the same reason or the same principle of tawheed which is the first obligation upon every single human being. That he bears witness and he testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is because of the same principle of tawheed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been commanded to do jihad. Jihad is a means and not a goal in and of itself. It is a means to establish tawheed on the land. I have been commanded to fight the people until they testify La ilaha illallah. So the whole reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and sent the prophets and revealed the books and differentiated us based upon this principle and allowed for jihad is the basis and is the principle of Tawheed. The life and property of a mushrik holds no value. Actually, Yasser Qadi should be arrested. Should be arrested for teaching jihad in USA, saying to his followers that the property of a Christian neighbor next to you is your lawful. His wife, it's okay to rape her. His daughter, you can kidnap her. In the top of that, he is saying that the Christians and non-Muslims are filthy, dirty like urine. This mosque should, mosque should shut down. Actually, all the mosques should be shut down because all of them say the same thing. But there is, you know, now we have a tape. There is a program in the BBC once published. It's called Dispatch. I don't know how many of you saw it. Maybe you can find it because the Muslims, they flag it and they took it down. Dispatch simply is a journalist who go undercover uh, claiming to be Muslims, go inside the mosque and record secretly the speeches and the sermon of Muslims. All of it is teaching to kill the Christians. All of it is teaching to kill non-Muslims. All of it is teaching hatred against non-Muslims. So there is something we say in TV for public, and there is something we say in private, and this is a private conversation. My friends, we don't hate anyone, and we will not hate Muslims. Because if we hate Muslims, we fell into the trap of Muhammad. We became satanic, like Muhammad. But in the same time, we are not fooled. Jesus says, be peaceful, 
like a dove. But in the same, be wise. Same time, you have to be wise. Peaceful does not mean fool. Peaceful does not mean stupid. Peaceful does not mean be coward. Somebody is asking me, do you hate Islam? My friend, we are not people of hypocrisy. We say Islam is of the devil. And we hate the devil. Did I answer you? When you have a filthy book coming from filthy God, he says that he will spread hatred between us. Why you want me to love Islam, Babdul? Hey, Mr. Christian Prince, do you hate Islam? Why you don't ask your God, the filthy God, satanic God, what kind of God he spread hatred? We are here to spread love. We say love the Muslims, hate the devil, and your prophet is the devil. Is that your book? Islam is against hatred, but Allah is the source of hatred. And if there is a Christian, he have hatred, as you claim, he is going to get it from Allah, as you see. Allah will stir up enmity and hatred among them. Who is the devil? Who is the devil? The devil is the one who stirred up enmity and hatred among the people. This is who is the devil. Actually, even the Quran says so. The same stupid Quran says that the devil is the one who spread hatred. The same stupid book. And the same stupid book says Allah spread hatred. Chapter 5, verse number 91 says, The devil only seek to instill hatred and enmity between you. Do you see it? Hamoud, he is saying, Arabian prophet, your God says he is jealous in your Bible. Is he a woman? What if I show you your God saying the same? You stupid son of Muta. So now if I flirt with your wife and you get jealous, that means you are a woman? Hamoud? Hamoud? Are you dressing your wife clothes like your prophet now? Huh? So now if I go and flirt with your wife, and I say, honey, how are you? And she said to me, honey, I love you. Uh, it, as Muslim, they send me email, Muslim women, they say to me, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. So what if your voice is sexy? Are you jealous now? You are so stupid and so silly. Did you change your diaper? Because your prophet used to wear one too. Very silly. Yeah. Yeah. Go dress to your wife clothes like your prophet. And don't forget to kiss the belly down of a man. And don't forget to attach your chest to the chest of a man. And don't forget to rub your back with the chest of that man, which is Muhammad. And don't forget to run to the door and open it when you are naked, totally naked, to the man. That's your prophet. At the end of the day, you kiss a black stone, you pagan, and it's in the shape of a vagina, and it was a vagina. So the devil is the one who seeks to steer hatred. What Allah do? He do the same. From the same chapter, look, look, look at the stupidity. I mean, this religion is really meant, made by a mental person. The same chapter says that the one who spread hatred is the devil. Chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 14 says that the one who spread hatred is Allah. Allah, it's in front of you. 514. Chapter 5, 91, it says that the one who do that is the devil. Allah, he confess that he is the devil and there's no question about it. And he is using exactly the same word. It is still hatred and enmity. Focus with me. Hatred and it is still hatred and enmity. What did the devil do? He instilled hatred and enmity. Chapter 5, verse number 91. Chapter 5, verse number 14. Allah, 
he instilled hatred and enmity. <laughs> Do you see it? Satanic cult teach hatred, spread hatred, violence. Jesus says, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. So we pray for the Muslim to see the truth. We don't want to kill the Muslims. We don't want to hate the Muslims. We don't want to have war with the Muslims. Not because we are cowardly. You, you, you know we are not. You know we are not. The coward is Muhammad who asks his cousin support to sleep in his bed so he can run away. Even your Isa in the Quran is a coward. According to the Muslims, he asks one of his disciples to take his dog so he can run away. It's religion of cowards. And you don't believe in your God, you believe in vagina. You Muslims don't believe in God, you believe in vagina. What is the, what is the reason to believe in Allah? Vagina. Boobs. If we take those things, Islam has no value. If you say they are not important, then why they are not there? Why they are there? Why Allah he mentioned to them? Why Allah he mentioned to you that your reward is a vagina? And he even describing how the vagina is or look like. And the funny is, Allah he have a good news to the Muhammadan. Look, this vagina come with the wax. Never been used. Nobody cut the tape yet. And when a Muslim, he says to you, Islam is the religion of peace. Well, this is why Yasir al Qadi says, I've been ordered to kill all mankind until they convert to Islam. Do you see how peaceful it is? This is why when a woman, woman she bashed Muhammad, uh, her husband, sorry, her, her, her master, he put a dagger, a black woman, he put a dagger in her chest and he killed her just for insulting Muhammad. And Muhammad, he says, no penalty for such a woman. Because there's no crime. No crime. Islam is peace. But Muhammad, he killed millions. And look how fast the Muslim, they change the topic. Yeah, I think you are a troll, Muhammad M. Get, uh, just let me, let me hide you. Islam respect other religion. That's why the Quran so call us. You know, I, I think this guy is a troll, you know. Just get out of here. Let your, let your dad talk to me. If you know who is he. Because Muhammad was born four years after his father's death. So who is the father? Do you know that according to the stupid cult of Islam, a woman she can give a child from her husband, her previous husband, or even the one who passed away, up to 12, 20, 20 years after? Can you believe it? I mean, how stupid this religion can go just to cover up why Muhammad, he was born four years after. This is islamweb.net, Islam, sorry, Islam, uh, uh, Islamica info. I will post the link for you. And this is the fatwa number. And here it says, how long a woman she can be carrying a child? waiting for delivery. How long? If you read the answer, you will die laughing. How long? According to Allah teaching and his prophet, read carefully with me. Opinion number one. Opinion number two. Opinion number three. Opinion number four. Opinion number five. Opinion number six. Opinion number seven, opinion number eight. Okay, well, let us read some of the opinion. Six years, five years. How many? So you divorce your wife in Islam. After five years, she call you. And he come to the hospital, pay for the delivery. What the heck? What hospital? I divorced you five years ago. Oh, this is your son. You're going to deny it. The prophet says so. Six years after, she call you. I have another son from you. You stupid. What you're talking about? I did not see you for six years. Here's your son. Okay. Are we done? No. 
Other opinion, seven years. Other opinion, there's no limit. What the heck with this cult? And don't forget that Islam is a scientific religion. All right? So now your wife, she will go sleep around with every scum back in the town. And then you are the one who will pay the bill. And not only that, the children of this guy who you, he stays step with, they will inherit you because now they are your children. There's a woman in Nigeria or Sudan, I forgot where, I think in Sudan. They were going to stone her because she is going to deliver two years after her husband's death. Obviously, she is sleeping with somebody. So they want to stone her. The lawyer is smart. He said to the judge, don't you know that in the Islamic Sharia, it says that a woman, she can deliver many years after? They check it out, it's true. So she have to go free and they have to apologize to her. Sorry, you are right, you are decent. This is Islam. And Muhammad was born four years after his unknown father death. Things happen. True. And let me give you the link because you might say this guy is lying. Hmm? You know the Muslims, you show them the reference, it's in the front of them, and they read it every day, by the way, and they never get offended by it. But the second you read it for them, they get offended. Because then they notice how stupid they are. They read the stupid Quran, the stupid Hadith, the stupid Prophet saying, teaching, and they never get offended. The second you quote it for them, it's the same second they go mad. Yes, our prophet is a stupid, but you cannot say that. I can. You cannot. It's your business. Let me post the link for you. Uh, somebody is posting the link already. So anyway, my friends, please download the video. Share it with your friends. Expose this guy. Send emails, share with the, with the, with the churches, uh, uh, forums, uh, Facebook, especially if you are in Texan. You know, I do not know this man. I don't want to do anything wrong to him except exposing his lies. He's a liar. And our duty as a Christian is to expose liars. That's why we are here. Muhammad is a liar, we expose him. This guy is a liar, we expose him. And he is a deceiver, deceiving the Christian, deceiving your children, inviting the devil to your church without warning you that those people are people of hatred, following the prophet of hatred. And this is the link. Who, how many of you would have promised me now to download this short video? Short video. Doesn't take you an hour to download. And it's spread all over. This is a priceless. Because I'm sure Yasser Qadi will try to take it down. How many of you will download it immediately? Before they take it down. U.S. Imam preaching theft, rape, and murder in USA. This is the title, in case you are looking for it. Download immediately. It's a very short video. It's 2 minutes 47 seconds, priceless. Where he said that you are evil, you are urine, you are feces, you are the worst of the creatures, and we are ordered to do jihad against the Christian and the Jews and kill them all. That is the words he is teaching us. Jihad is a war, it's not kissing. He's not fighting you by shoes. He's fighting by weapon, killing by weapon. So when this guy, he says, we've been ordered to do jihad against the Christian and the Jews. He's talking about killing the Christians and the Jews. 
This is not a joke. I will keep this video maybe until a few hours more until people download it. As you know, I don't keep videos on my channel. Download, share, and I hope we did a good today exposing the liars. And my friend, the Bible is true. The Bible is true. Be aware of false teachers. Be aware. False teachers, false prophets who come to you in a sheep clothing, but they are very vicious, aggressive, filthy wolves. Be careful where you send your children. Who is the one who is going to teach your children? Go to this church you clean, because these days, by the way, you know, I mean, anyone can open church. That's why Yasser Qadi actually is making fun of him. He says he opened a church. He opened a church as if he's talking about a store, right? Because we have a freedom in this country, right? So you go and you open a church. We don't know who is this person. Maybe he's a fraud, maybe he's a scam, maybe he is like Yasser Qadi himself. Like uh, Ibn Farooq, who claimed that he is a sheikh. He claimed that he have a master's degree in Hadith, but he cannot read Arabic. I don't know which language. Imagine you have a degree in the, in the, in the, in the Bible in Hebrew, because Muslims didn't have other Quran. They have only Quran in Arabic. Yet he don't know how to read the Quran. Fraud. How we recognize the false teachers? Very easy. They praise other God. They refuse to bash and to rebuke other false teaching. They welcome false God to their churches. They invite false prophets words to be spoken in their churches. From their fruits, you shall know them. So this guy in the church, he say he believe in Jesus to be God, but yet he invite the devil and he forbid his followers from exposing the devil. How that work? And what is the benefit of this? What is exactly the accomplishment? So Muslim now will come to our churches and they will bash us, says you are false, you are not monotheist, you are, you are, they will bash you in front of you. And the man there says to you, we cannot bash them. We cannot refute them. You just sit and listen like a puppy. And I can tell that the donation is working good in both of them to the point they cannot even buckle up their jacket. Do you see where the donation is going? They are very hardworking people. Extremely hardworking people. Thank you for your donation. The lobster was good. And my car is fancy. And the belly is getting bigger. The only problem I have, I need to buy a jacket every two weeks because it's getting bigger. Business is booming. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. I want to say at the end today that I have a brother who left Islam. I'm not going to say who, it's up to him to say. He gave me a good news that his wife, she delivered a son. And actually, uh, he asked me what the name of the son should be. He like, you know, what a good name. Uh, he asked me for advice. I gave him a name and he accepted the name. So that make my day. I'm very happy for him. I pray to the Lord that this ex-Muslim will become a great Christian, him and his family, and their son will be blessed by the Lord. And I hope soon they will baptize him to be a great child of God, to be useful, as the Lord, he says, from their fruit you shall know them. So we are happy for this brother, and we say, I'm really proud of you and your family and your wife. and. Uh, we pray and we ask all the Christians to bless the, ch the, the, the child 
the newborn child. Uh, and uh, I'm so happy. It's really touched me that he chose the name as I advise him. Beautiful name, biblical name. And that will give him more mean and reasoning in life. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. This is your brother, Christian Prince, who is serving you for today. Pray for Muslims. We love them. We don't hate them. Don't fail into the trap of hatred like Muhammad because he wants us to kill each other. He is the devil. He is the blood monster, the blood sucker. He is the mosquito. She cannot live without blood. That is Muhammad. That is Muhammad. Smash the mosquito, Muhammad. Save the Muslims from the bloodshed. This is what we are here for. We don't want to hatred. We are fighting hatred. God bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is a fraud. And we prove it every day. And if you are from Texas, please don't forget to share the video with everybody. Let everyone know that this man is a fraud. You can download the video. You can post it in your G drive in case YouTube is trying to take it down. And you can share it in churches privately if you want. Thank you. God bless you and take care. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> Stop, I just remember, I'm going to publish in five minutes a new book in Indian language. So this week, we have a great news. We have the Tagalog. We have the Indian language, this one now, and we have uh, 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 Sex in Allah in Albania, and three books. So I will publish the link for the Indian language for my book right after I finish this video. I will make a short video about it and I will publish it. Thank you. That the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. 